For those who guessed that I was talking about the Nicholas Hammond series when I said we were going to do a live-action Spider-Man show, you were correct. I give this series credit for making the best effort they possibly could with the effects. As we watch this, we need to keep in mind that this was 1977, the same year the first Star Wars movie came out. The technology was what it was, and the makers of this show didn't have industrial light and magic's money behind them. I know it sounds like I'm already apologizing for this show. I'm not. I'm reminding my younger viewers that CGI hasn't always been a thing. How's my pressure? Where are you going? Hey, 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 Doc, aren't you going to take this thing off? Hey, hey, Doc! What, what's the matter with you? Whatever it is, it has something to do with what time it is. The prosecution has failed to sustain the burden of proof. To find this defendant guilty with the evidence that the district attorney's office has presented would be a travesty. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, He's acting just like the doctor did. The two of them get into a car and prepare to rob a bank. Whatever is controlling them is doing so through that pin we zoomed in on because they both have one. Where are they going now? They're going to the hospital, that's where they're going. While the police are trying to sort this out, let's peek in on the Daily Bugle where young Peter Parker is trying to sell some photos to J. Jonah Jameson. Very pretty. Very pretty, but what good are they? I'm not running an art gallery here. I need pictures that jump off the page, grab the reader. Sorry, Parker, they're not for us. Well, sir, if you could just send me out on an assignment, I'm sure I could get you what you want. Look, I appreciate your working your way through college. That's what I did. And if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't even bother with you. My suspension of disbelief is already out the window. That is not J. Jonah Jameson. That is Larry Tate, Darren Stevens' boss on Bewitched, and he always will be. David White was a character actor with well over 150 appearances to his credit, and we all remember him for one thing. We've seen him before in Wonder Woman, and I had the same problem there. We can already see that he's playing Jonah in a very different way than he's usually depicted. This Jonah has a heart of sorts. But while he's trying to let Peter down easy, Robbie Robertson comes bursting in. I told you it was something crazy about that bank robbery. Read this. It just came by special messenger. It's going out to every newspaper, radio, and television station in town. Say, Peter, turn on television, say, we. What's all the excitement? Take it easy, Robbie. What's the matter with this guy? Is he crazy? I don't believe a word of it. Somebody's playing a joke. I don't know, JJ. I mean, a lawyer and a doctor teaming up to rob a bank? They certainly didn't need the money. And that's good, because the authorities still haven't found the money. Robbie Robertson joined the Bugle in 1967 and was one of the first recurring black characters in the comics of the time. He's one of the most well-rounded characters I ever saw. What you see really is what you get, and he has a lot to offer the Bugle. He's become one of comicdom's most beloved characters, and at least when I was still reading, Peter and Robbie's son Randy were becoming good friends. He's the voice of reason in Jonah's bombastic ear. And he has a fair idea there's a lot more to this story than meets the eye. We interrupt this program for a special hey, news alert. It. One of the most bizarre crimes in the history of the city now appears to be unfolding. The mayor has received an extortion note in which the lives of 10 New Yorkers have been threatened. And you can bet they're not nameless folks living on the street. As with all human establishments, there are citizens, and then there are citizens. 
this is a newspaper story. What are they doing? The writer claims that ten people somewhere in the city have been programmed to destroy themselves at his command. Let me see that again. To prove that he has full control over his victims' minds, the extortionist accepts full responsibility for the bank robbery committed only this morning by two of the city's most respected citizens. Nobody has a better explanation for why those two guys would do such a thing, but Jonah still thinks it's a prank. The price not to make these people do something bad to themselves is $50 million to be delivered to a place to be determined later. I had the run stop so we can replay the front page. Suppose it's a hoax. What do we look like then? What do we look like if we backpage it and it's real? What do you think, Peter? Well, well what's think... the difference what he thinks? I'm just getting an opinion from a man on the street, okay? Well, sir, I don't know very much about mind control. Who does? Except I do know that they've been doing experiments and they can force people to do things against their will. Yeah? You're gonna have to prove it to me. According to the extortionist, he already did. Doctor, lawyer, bank robber, remember? That's not a children's jump rope song. They start discussing layout and Peter ceases to exist. For all the good this is doing him, he might as well be in school. Hey, I evil can evil. What? You forgot to put your film badge on. Oh. Of course, if you want to live dangerously, that's your business. But I figure if any radiation gets loose in here, we ought to know about it. What's the matter with you, anyway? Sorry, I, I was just thinking about something else. Uh, Dave, do you believe in mind control? Peter and Dave are lab partners, and they're working with some highly radioactive materials. Wait, my mistake. Not radioactive, radioactive. I didn't realize it's two words. There's a delivery for Peter. The condenser's for my new transmitter. What are you building in your attic, a space station? Hey, uh, it's CLD, $46.20. Pay the man. It doesn't seem like that much until we remember their $1977. That's equivalent to a little over $230 today. And this guy doesn't take checks. He's being a little nasty about it. You want this thing? You come down to the warehouse. Peter is upset, but that guy wasn't going to give him the package. I'm with Dave. Since he's being such a jerk, let's mess with him a little. Aside from the fact that it's funny, we Daves have to stick together. Peter trying to get the money to ransom his condensers will become a running subplot for a while. There really is some highly radioactive material in that container Dave is messing with, so they had better take care of it. Peter saw that flicker, Dave didn't. They both brush it off. If they spill that stuff, they may as well kiss their futures goodbye. They pour the stuff into that vial and put a heavy lead cover over it. Mission accomplished. And that spider is glowing. While Dave puts the lead container away, we watch the spider make a trek over to Peter's desk. We all know what's going to happen, but we pretend we don't because it makes the show more fun. doesn't realize that his life just changed forever. In the original comic, that bite was the spider's final act of defiance as it died in Peter's hand. Right now, he's not even sure what poked him, but he's more interested in getting home.
I don't know that I ever would have been able to be an armored car guard. It seems awfully dangerous. When I was in grad school getting my master's in biblical Hebrew, that was driven home to me in the worst possible way. I had a friend who was interested in the same things I was, and we had several classes together. Our favorite class was Ugaritic, a language that's sort of a first cousin to Hebrew. We enjoyed trying to figure out how to translate common American phrases into it. He never finished the class. He never finished any of them. He worked as an armored car guard, and he liked to be the one who went into the businesses and collected the day's receipts because he liked to interact with the people. He was coming out of a McDonald's when some ran up, grabbed the money bag, and shot him in the face. Killed him instantly. This happened in the early 80s, and I moved away before I ever learned whether they caught the guy or not, and all the newspaper archives and such are scattered to the four winds. When I first met him and he told me what he did for a job, I felt a sort of shadow pass over my heart, and it was right. I really hate that. Our guards here will get away with their lives, and our perpetrator will just get away. doesn't know what his spider sense is yet, but he is paying attention to it. I think that's more than Cartoon Spider-Man ever did. That's our first wall crawling effect, and it's not bad. It's making the same mistake that the original comic, the animated series, and every depiction since made, which is to say... How are his shoes sticking to the wall? But again, it's a consistent thing throughout all the Spider-Man media, so the answer is, they just are, okay? And you have to love that. Hold on, what did I just do? He starts thinking back. While he's doing that, our two guys grab the money in the pin and disappear. Too bad Peter didn't see them. He's back down taking pictures of the wrecked car. Hey! Hey, you! I'm Captain Bob Barrett. I understand you saw all of this. Oh, uh, yes, sir. I was coming out of the drugstore, and, and this car uh, started following me. So I ran down here to get away, and he came after me. You know the man? No, sir. I never saw him in my life. That's another of life's little mysteries, huh? Get this innocent bystander's name and address. And get these rubbernecks out of here! Friends of the channel might recognize his associate as Bob Hastings, whom we've seen many times. To me, he'll always be Lieutenant Carpenter, Captain Binghamton's long-suffering aide on McHale's Navy. Where's the money? It wasn't there. Hey! Hey! Kid, come here! Now look, I know you want to be helpful. So maybe you can tell me what happened to the $20,000 that was in that car. He can't help. He didn't see anything. But I wasn't here. Where were you? The cop says nobody came out of the alley. Oh, well, um... Yes, Peter, let's hear your answer that he's likely to believe. He'll hem and haw until Barbara gets tired of it and lets him leave. Early the next morning, Peter is ready to experiment. have our first view of the green screen effect, and it's definitely not ILM. The department did their best. And remember, even the original Star Wars had matte lines. We've seen enough of that. Let's watch a little really good acting. <laughs> 
Let's see any of us do that. He heads into town to test it further. Into an alley, make sure nobody's around, and... That's a really good effect. Except for the ear-splitting noise. I don't know what that's about. Help! Stop him! Stop him! Help! Stop him! Help! Stop him! Hey, you! Hold it! Hold it! Of course he's just standing there. What would you do if you saw that and there was no such thing as Spider-Man comics? Did you see him? Did you see him? The guy on the wall? He's climbing on the wall. Snap back, Liz was a junkie. I saw him, I tell you, he was up on the wall, way up there. Yeah, he's right, officer, I saw him too. Right there, coming down the wall. What's the matter with you people? I saw him. Where is he? Point him out. He ain't there. You see him? Yeah, I saw him. He was here a minute ago. Peter doesn't have time to hang around and become a sideshow. He has pictures to sell. This is the guy with the mind control. The fellow who's been writing those ransom notes is the one that's been making all these robberies and accidents happen. A wreck is a wreck is a wreck. That's all you show here. This story needs something different. It's only $46. Well, if you could get me a picture of the Spider-Man, that I'd buy. Who? Spider-Man. At least that's what these drunks called him. I saw someone climbing up and down the walls. A light bulb just came on over Peter's head. But he's real. There is someone like that. He, he can climb walls and he is like a spider. I mean it. There is a Spider-Man? Yes, sir. You're sure? Very sure. I suppose you're going to tell me he caught you with his little web. No, sir, but I did see him. Jonah is still skeptical. Peter says he's a full-grown man, but he can climb walls like a spider, make webs, and he has proportionate strength, which means he's thousands of times stronger than any of us. Jonah thinks Peter's on drugs. Time for the coup de grace. I took a picture of him. A picture? You have an actual picture? Yes, sir. But why didn't you say so? Well, what does he look like? Peter's really thinking on his feet now. He says he wears a special costume to hide his identity so he can walk around without everybody pointing at the wall-crawling freak. It's just believable enough that they say, okay, go get the picture. Peter! Peter, aren't you coming down for dinner? In a few minutes. Oh, well, hurry up. Everything's getting cold. Uh, Peter, did you take your allergy pills? Peter! Aunt May, I'm busy up here. Well, did you take your allergy pills? I took them. Good. I'm going to put the soup on the table now. That is the best preserved Aunt May I ever saw. We met Jeff Donnell in episode 18 of Kolchak, and I talked about her there. In the comics, Aunt May looks a lot older than this. Somebody must have noticed the mismatch because she won't be back and we won't see another Aunt May in the series. Uncle Ben is never mentioned. And Peter really does have allergies that require the medication she's pestering him about. May had a lot of red and blue fabric lying around and he figured go with what you got. He sets the timer on his camera and moments later he's developing pictures of Spider-Man. <laughs> Nicholas Hammond was 27 when he did this but you believe he's an 18 or 19 year old kid who's just been handed the new toy of his dreams. He decided to be an actor before he was 10 years old when he saw a production of My Fair Lady on stage in England. His family moved to the United States, and before long, he played Friedrich in the Sound of Music movie. 
He's best known for that role in this one, but he's been working his chops steadily from the sound of music down to the present day. I hope this was one of his favorite roles because he looks like he's having a blast. What's he got on, his underwear? Well, no, sir, that's like what they wear in the gym. It lets him move around more freely. Hey, I like this one. He really is hanging onto that wall, isn't he? How does he do that? I don't know. Good answer, and probably true. Arachnology isn't one of his fields of science, although I have a hunch it is now. Where? Kent and Carlisle. All right, we'll get a man down there. Well, we've got another one. What? That extortionist is really laying it on. Factory payroll, crashed into the wall like all the others. Any identification? No. And if it's like the rest of them, it'll liable to turn out to be the governor. Thing is, they have exactly one photographer available. Guess who? Surprise! Oh, hello, Captain. I'm taking pictures. Oh, is that what it's for? The captain would like to know why Peter keeps turning up at these things, and in good TV fashion, Peter's Linguistic Processing Center seems unable to form the words, I'm working for the Daily Bugle. He looks delirious. Can't you get him out of here? Well, he's pinned behind the wheel. We can't move him. But we got a record coming. Well, he's not going to last. Take a look at him. Hey, listen, take it easy, will you? We're doing everything we can. Can you get a blanket? Mm, sure. No, not for him, for me. I have a little chill and Aunt May doesn't want me to catch a nasty old sniffle. You can wrap that blanket around him and put him in the ambulance now, dude. What happened? I don't know. I think the steering wheel broke off. Uh, Captain Barbera? We can get him out now. Here, I'll give you a no, no, please, please. Just stay away, okay? Thank you. Now watch it. Watch it. Behold a young man yearning for the days to come when, if your memory card pops out, you just shove it back in and everything's okay. All right, get, get away from him, miss. my father. Judy. Dad, what happened? They called me from school. I, I don't know. I, I, I can't remember. Excuse me, lady. Please, I want to go with you. It's okay, we can handle it. I want a cop stationed at his door. As soon as the doctor says he's all right, call me. He's the only one not in a coma. The rest are under a doctor's care. Take off. Peter and that steering wheel may have something to do with why he's not in a coma, but nobody needs to know that. Miss Tyler? Your father, he's with the university, isn't he? The English department. Yeah, I've seen him on campus. Uh, my name is Peter Parker, and... Well, I'll, I'll go with you to the hospital if you want. Wait, it's a mistake. He didn't do it, he couldn't have. Don't you worry about anything. I'll straighten it out. It's so nice of you to go with me, complete stranger. I don't know why you're here. We watched one of the bad guys go to his car and use a little radio. Tyler is conscious, has been taken to the hospital. Request further instructions. Judy and Peter have been visiting Professor Tyler, but it's time to go. We watch our mystery man fiddle with some gadgets. Mystery man fiddles with some more impressive equipment. A message says, Noah, Tyler, destroy. And by the time the kids get to the car, they wish they hadn't. Hey, up, get up there, move it! We know where Peter's going, someplace private. Up 
to the roof, over to where Tyler's room is, and back down. <laughs> thought he was just putting him back in the room, but he takes him up to the roof. He heads back down and changes into his street clothes before the police can get close enough to ask questions. Peter, where were you? You missed everything! I can't get enough of his facial expressions. That's a 12-year-old saying, no, I didn't. At the bugle, he's explaining to JJ about the broken camera. I'm sure Jonah understands. No, you can't have your money. And don't bring me any more pictures. Do you, do you think that... Do you think you could possibly lend me $46? I, I can get it back to you. After all you've done for us, that's the least I can do. Come on. Tell me again what he's done for you. He went with you to the hospital before you knew his name. He disappeared when your dad was on a ledge. I guess that's worth $46. She's trying to figure out what would make her dad do such things and not remember them. Will you do me a favor? Sure. My dad's been going to this special group. You know, there's all kinds of them. Human awareness, human potential. They have all sorts of names for it. And somebody puts on a white sheet and calls himself a guru. It's not funny. It never is, especially to the people who end up getting scammed or worse. I'm sorry. My dad really swears by his. And the leader of the group is a guy named Byron. Have you ever heard of him? No. But if your father goes to him, maybe he can help. I want to go. Will you go with me? When? Now. Please, Peter, I have to talk to Mr. Byron. It's convenient that the group is meeting at this very moment. Excuse me, would you? Good afternoon. We're glad to have you. I'm Edward Byron. Judy Tyler. Professor Tyler's daughter? Oh, yes. I'm Peter Parker. I'm so glad you were able to come. Friends, it's time to begin our meeting. Shall we step inside? I already don't trust him. His expression reminds me of a lioness looking at a three-legged gazelle. Thayer David was good at that. The last time we saw him, he was blackmailing a young lady with an eidetic memory in The Invisible Man. With that face and his size, he was often typecast as an intimidating villain. And all we have to see is his body profile to know he's the guy who was twiddling all those controls. I think we have a good idea where the pin comes in, too. Unfortunately, he'll only let Peter and Judy stay for a generic berating about how miserable all their lives are and they need to be taught a whole different approach to living. When it's time to start that part, he makes them leave. You're going back, aren't you? Oh, Judy, I couldn't buy any of that stuff. Well, I can. I mean, the way things are going for me now, I can use some help. Well, would you settle for a poverty-stricken grad student? I might. I don't think I'm ready. Maybe Byron Sessions will help. That sparks a disagreement between them, and she basically dismisses him. So far, I like this. The effects are decent, including the wire work and the camera angle work. For the most part, you can believe a man is climbing the wall. But the strongest point for this show is Nicholas Hammond. He's giving this everything he has, and he has loads to give. As I mentioned, his facial expressions alone are worth finding this and watching it. Right now, we don't know if it's his spider sense or just common sense, but Peter can't escape the feeling that Judy is walking into something bad. We already know he's right. Next time, we'll see what it is, what Byron's goal is, and what Peter might be able to do about it. And the majors, <laughs> majors, because the authorities <laughs> in England, never mind, year old kid who didn't get enough air. Ah!
<coughs> Come on, boys. <clears throat> Come on, Cap. 